You know, it was by pure accident that I got into the Army National Guards. I went to Healand High School here in Sioux City, and I didn't realize I had to go down when I turned age 18 to enlist for the draft. The guy's talking about having enlisted and all this kind of stuff, and I thought, well, geez, I better, I probably better get down there myself. I wanted to go to the military. That was my era. Vietnam was our time. I left the office there, and I went down to the Army National Guard Armory and signed up then. My dad was in the military in World War II, and he was in the Battle of the Bulge. And my dad was pretty, pretty hardcore guy, very nice guy, but 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 pretty straightforward. My dad sent me off from the airport here, and it was probably the the very first time that I ever seen my dad choke up because I'm leaving. Three sixtieth transportation in Cameron Bay. That was considered an R&R &R center for most of the guys. But I'm here to tell you, it wasn't an R&R &R center for me. I was supposed to be a, a light duty vehicle driver. But when I got there, it wasn't a light duty vehicle driver because what they showed me was a multi-fuel six wheel drive and it pulls a 5,000 gallon fuel tanker. And they said, here you are, this is gonna be your truck and when you learn how to drive that, you'll be on convoy at three o'clock in the morning. It's a complete array. It's not one thing. The sun shines over there just like it does here. And you got your good days and you got your bad days and you got your dangerous days. I mean, it, it just is. If they could stop the convoys, that means they stopped airstrikes because we hauled gasoline, jet fuel. It wasn't uncommon to see if you had a bullet hole in your truck. There was no real good roads over there. From Cameron Bay to Fan Rang, they finally put in a 20 mile stretch of asphalt. The rest of the roads everywhere was just dirt roads. And a lot of the times bridges and the like were blown up. Basically a 50 mile drive was an all day job. The mail keeps you going forward. My wife wrote me every day that kept my spirits alive. It's so refreshing to have somebody keep an umbilical cord to home. When I got back in to Cameron Bay, I got my truck and trailer and everything all lined up to be refueled so we could take back off again. Here comes the first sergeant, picks me up at my truck. He says, jump in. So I jump in, uh, we head back. He says, grab what you can because you're going home. I says, really? When you're in the airport, especially from where we came, you're not welcomed home as a hero's welcome at all. Harassment here isn't going to be anything like where I just came from. <laughs> so it don't make any difference. That was the last time I put the uniform on. I've never had it on again.